Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, sort of a special edition today, not something I want to do, but I feel like I need to do. Uh, a lot of you will have heard the news, but I just want to basically put the truth out there really. Uh, and put my point of view across and uh, stop all the gossip and the rubbish I'm reading on Facebook and other social media pages and YouTube and all that crap. So yeah, uh, very disappointed. Uh, with what's happened in let's say the last 48 hours uh, is an understatement uh, but yeah I feel like I need to uh, tell everyone the truth really and uh, my point of view and my opinion uh, because as I've been reading so much crap on social media like people just making things up and accusations and I, my phone has been blowing up like left right and centre for the last two or three days uh, basically since the uh, uh, someone posted it on YouTube that I'm banned. Uh, so yeah, just uh, thought I'd better to do it this way than it is to reply to everyone, which is impossible, and just repeating myself. I just got fed up with it, really. Uh, having to answer questions, what uh, I didn't really want to answer, really. So uh, I think it's best that I just put it out there myself. I uh, thought about writing, but not the best writer, so I thought just best speaking, not the best speaker either, but whatever. Uh, I don't really care so uh, yeah so so basically uh, I'll start from the beginning really uh, uh, basically well basically my punishment is is that uh, uh, the WPA I fined me $1,500 uh, I had to write an apology letter to Matroom and if I do another offence I automatically get a 12 month ban from all Q sports uh, so uh, once I got this uh, email, like a couple of uh, on Sunday night, I was a little bit surprised, let's say, but uh, accepted the decision. Because uh, like a week after the World Championships, after the incident, I got an email from Emily Fraser at Matchroom saying that uh, I've been reported at WPA, and uh, in the meantime, I will be suspended from her events, Matchroom events until the WPA disciplinary have taken action of what my punishment will be, if any. So uh, so that basically ruled me out for the World Masters, which I'm pretty sure I would have got in there, uh, rather as a wild card or an alternate as two players dropped out at the end. So obviously that was a bit of a blow. Uh, but this is like a good, about three weeks ago now, probably a little bit longer, so I'm thinking, well, so obviously I got in contact with the WPA, told them my side of the story, uh, and they said, yeah, give us a couple of weeks. Obviously, you've got to have a committee meeting, get their delegates together and go through my side of the version and Matrim side of the version and then come to a decision. So I knew it was going to take two or three weeks. So I'm thinking hopefully it gets sorted out before the UK Open and the World Cup of Pool, which I know I'll be playing with Jason Shaw, right? So... Uh, so yeah, basically uh, the World Anti-Doping Association, they've started doing more testing at, at all WPA matchroom, uh, all WPA sanctioned events, which is great. They clean up the game a little bit. Uh, over, let's say, the last 14 years, I've been a American style pool player, let's say. I've probably done seven or eight of these tests, which is unbelievable, really. Uh, but back in the day, you probably do, they probably show it to one or two times a year, and that's it. But in recent times, I've been starting doing a lot more, probably showing up to every tournament, which is good. Uh, so last year, one player failed a test, as we all know. Uh, American player, uh, for some crazy reason, uh, he hasn't been given his length of ban or punishment. So he wasn't allowed to play for like a certain amount of time. But in recent times, uh, Matt Room and WPA are letting him play in tournaments again, uh, but still pending his his punishment uh, so again I'm not too sure what's going on there that's nothing to do with me uh, but yeah it's all a bit bizarre really because uh, I just thought if you fail your drug test then you automatically get a two-year ban minimum uh, so I don't know what's going on there but anyway I did a test last year at the walk of a pool so uh, no problem uh, probably well probably the cleanest pool player what's ever lived so uh, or one of them uh, so I'm not worried about doing tests great uh, 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 so anyway I did a test last year and then obviously in Las Vegas about six weeks ago uh, played my final 16 match and the criteria is now it used to be semi-finalist now the criteria is if you get to the final 16 
apparently they randomly pick out four players to do the test. So it's apparently it's a draw or something. So I got picked out in Las Vegas, won my last 16 match, 10-9. Got to play straight away. There wasn't like a, a 10, 15 minute break. I'm scheduled to play straight away. Uh, so I get tapped on the shoulder. I didn't even get my cue in my case before he tapped me on the shoulder. Says I've been picked out. So you become their property. This is not negotiable. Uh, you become their property. And if you fail to abide by their rules for uh, longer than five minutes or, or something like that, or you're out of their sight for five minutes or refuse to do the test, then you automatically fail the test, even without doing one. So he has to go wherever I go now. Uh, so I said, look, I've just been to the restroom. Uh, I think the score was like, I don't know, uh, eight five or something. So I knew I didn't need to uh, use a restroom or the toilet at this moment. So I go outside, have a coffee, a smoke. He follows me, obviously. Uh, speak to him, fine, all great. So then I go to the room, fill out the paperwork, uh, try to do the test, but come finish it. So he says, look, you can go and play your match. Uh, and then if you need to use a restroom during the match, you have to come back to the room and finish it. I think well that's not ideal, but now I'm trying to just trying to get my head around that I've got to play another match here. Uh, so I, I'm thinking, oh, I can just wait until I, I finish the test. So it could be like an hour, two hours, three hours until I play my next match. In hindsight, that's what I should have done. But I think for the tournament and for the good of the tournament and the organisers, I think I probably should start the match. But in hindsight, it was a wrong decision because I had no focus, no concentration, no nothing. Played absolutely terrible. Uh, so the score was like six two. Uh, finally need need the restroom not like I can hold it I need to go so I told the guys look I need I need to go so he says look you have to come to the back room so I finished the test he goes look you can finish the paperwork uh, so I, I filled up the bottle uh, so he says I can finish the paperwork now or I can do it after my match finishes I think well the last thing I want to do if I lose is come back here and finish these paperwork and then mess around for another 10-15 minutes so I said look I'll just do it now so that took about 20 minutes so during my match i took like 20 25 minute break obviously my opponent wasn't happy when i went back to the table i explained to him what happened this is fine anyway i lose a match 10 free played terrible and uh, wasn't focused or concentrated in on the match and really disappointed anyway a week later I go to the world championships in the uk uh so again playing great tournament's going really smooth for me uh, winning all my matches pretty comfortable and then uh, we get stronger and stronger as the tournament goes on. Uh, I played Joshua Filler in the final 16, and I want to put it out there. This match, uh, my outburst has got nothing to do with Joshua Filler. Uh, we, we got on pretty well. Uh, got a lot of respect for his game, everything else, and the, and the game was played in good spirit. Uh, the only downside is that I was 10 7 up, didn't get another opportunity. It's win a break, and I don't come back to the table, and I lose 11 10, absolutely sick, because uh, I really felt as if I could have gone all the way. But at 10 10, uh, no, sorry, at 10 8, Joshua takes a timeout. So I, I go to the restroom also. So I obviously have a wee. Uh, so now I'm, uh, so anyway, Joshua gets to the nine ball. The nine ball's over the pocket. Ill Hill, 10 10. It's unmissable. He goes back to his chair, starts messing around. And I just said it's good because I, I just did, couldn't, I couldn't uh, uh, just wait for him to, I just couldn't, I just think, what 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 is the point in me? Uh, going through this process really I think he, he can't miss the ball so I conceded the game and as I did that he starts screaming uh, with joy uh, before I shake his hand it niggled me a little bit but nothing major uh, it's not like he's, he's he, obviously he's, he's well known for it whether that's a good thing or a bad thing I, I don't know I don't really care uh, so anyway lose the match 11-10 as I'm walking out the arena again I get another tap on the shoulder I can't remember if it was the Wada guy or Brownie from Matchroom Security says said something to me like Wadder, but I just thought, did he say I've got to do interview or something? Uh, and it explains to me what's happened. I've been randomly picked out again, so I'm thinking, well, this is crazy. Uh, so I'm thinking if I just explain to them that I've just done a test like seven days ago, surely they can check, and then I won't have to do this test. The last thing I want to do is be sticking around here for the next hour, two hours. I know I, I'm not going to need the restroom. Uh, so obviously I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, so it says, doesn't matter, it's a different organisation to the one what I did in America. Uh, so yeah, I just, I had an empty bottle in my hand, I slammed it on the floor. And this is in the corner room, away from the arena. There's only like 20 people there uh, in the crowd anyway, but it was away from the playing arena, let's say. Uh, a few of the matchroom staff, security, Brownie, and uh, who's Brownie, and uh, the Wada guy, who actually tested me last year at the World Cup pool. So I just 
stormed out of the, let's say, the door to go outside. Obviously, the guy's got to follow me. And he's trying to talk to me. I says, look, don't talk to me, basically. Obviously, she said that, blah, blah. I went outside, uh, threw my cue case against the concrete wall. Again, just just so sick we're losing and just can't believe that this is happening. Uh, in the meantime, managed to damage my finger a little bit. Uh, so I have a smoke, all that stuff. Go back inside. I pass one of the matchroom staff, uh, Matt Lynch. And I said, why me again? And blah, blah. And he says, oh, it's not their job. It's just uh, wherever. And I thought he had a bit of a smirk on his face. And I says, it, it, it isn't funny. You want to take that smirk off your face? Uh, straight away, I regret saying that to him because he's a good guy. Got on well with him. Or I, I always got on well with him. Uh, so then I proceed to walk uh, down the side to go to this... Uh, the anti-doping room, and the guy's trying to tell me the process. I said, look, I know what the, uh, the effing process is. Uh, I've done this effing process like before. You don't need to tell me. Don't speak to me. And he's trying to speak to me. And I says, look, uh, I basically told him to go eff himself, basically, really loudly, and don't speak to me. And I just lost the plot, really. Uh, but at no time did I threaten anybody. At no time did I have any intentions of hurting anybody. I was just really on tilt from losing and obviously having to go through his process when I just wanted to get out of there, get back to my room, pack my bags. I've got a two-hour journey to get home, which is great, and just get out of there, really. Uh, but obviously, I'm stuck here. Obviously, lost the plot. Uh, no doubt about it, my behaviour wasn't acceptable as a professional pool player. Uh, and yeah, uh, I used uh, bad language uh, and uh, yeah, it wasn't good. So I go to the room trying to fill out the papers, tell them I don't need to go to the restroom, so we proceed to go back outside. At this time, Brownie from security at Matchroom, he buy me a coffee, I had a drink of water, some more coffee, go outside, have another smoke, and then this time I start to calm down, processing that I've just lost the match, and I tell everyone who knows me, if I get a bad beat, or anything like that, Ill Hill, or whatever, or I play bad and I should have won still, or blah, blah, then just leave me alone for 10, 15 minutes, just let me calm down, process what's happened, and I'm fine. Uh, it's always been the case with me uh, and yeah so anyway I start calming down this time I start to apologize to everyone especially the guy from WADA because uh, of the way I spoke to him he, he accepted it he says look it's not the first time it's happened I, I get it you've just got beat bad loss you're showing your emotion uh, no no problem it's not personal uh, so he was fine I apologize to Brownie he's, he's fine like really great guy I text Matt Lynch straight away I couldn't see him anywhere, so I texted him. I said, look, I'm really sorry the way I spoke to you. He says, yeah, fine, I, I get it. Obviously, you're emotional from losing. Uh, no problem. So I just said, thanks, blah, blah, and I apologise to you when I see you. So then we proceed to go back to the room. I managed to do the test, no problem. Uh, and then when I come back out, obviously, Emily pulled me aside, so I'm very apologetic to Emily, quite emotional as well. And she's telling me, look, we need to think about the local pool, all that stuff. Uh, so obviously, I'm thinking what, what what's happening here I'm thinking I'm just going to get a warning or a slap on the wrist just give me a good telling off which I obviously deserved and this is look I'm going to have to report it to the WPA and then obviously they'll decide what's going to happen so he says in the meantime I want you to go home uh, leave here think about what you've done the next couple of days but obviously uh, I, I knew what I'd done and all that stuff so went home uh, about oh, six, seven days later, got an email from Emily at Matchroom saying that uh, uh, I've been reported to the WPA. Uh, my behaviour was unacceptable, uh, that aggressive behaviour. Uh, uh, I don't know what you mean by aggressive. I uh, didn't threaten nobody, that's for sure. And uh, I had no intentions of doing anything like that. I just lost the plot. But yeah, probably use aggressive language, but uh, not in a threatening way. Uh, so, yeah, so she says, like, in the meantime, you're suspended from matchroom events until uh, the WPA have decided what to do with me. So the next day, I put my letter to the WPA. Also, I had a phone call with the WPA, uh, explained my side of the story. So they said, like, give us a couple of weeks. Obviously, we've got to get the committee, the delegates together and decide... Uh, look at both sides of the story and decide what to do. So I knew it was going to take two weeks. So I'm thinking, well, uh, probably not going to get in the World Masters now. And I was pretty confident that I would have got in the World Masters as a wild card or an alternate because two players dropped out. So I already missed the World Masters. Disappointing. Uh, so I'm hoping this can get sorted out before the UK Open. I've paid my entry, everything else. And uh, 
yeah so uh sunday like two three days ago sunday night i got my email from the world pool association the wpa uh, basically saying that i've been fined fifteen hundred dollars uh i've been i have to make it a, a letter of apology to matroom which i already done before but sent another one uh probably more detailed i guess uh and then i and then thirdly because it was my second offense my first offense was 2016 when uh, uh i had an incident with mike deshane he basically used abusive language about my wife at the time and i basically slapped him around the back of the head that resulted in me getting a 200 dollar fine i think he got a 500 dollar fine and he might have got like some sort of suspension from match events i'm not sure but he definitely got a 500 dollar fine uh, so he got bigger punishment than me for what he said, basically. Uh, so that was like six years ago. So obviously, my DBPA said this is my second offence. Uh, and if I do another offence, I will get an automatic 12-month ban from all Q sports. So I think, well, uh, so I thought, yeah, so I processed the email from DBPA. And I thought, well, uh, obviously, I'll no choice, really, but to accept it. Uh, yeah, I accepted it. I thought, yeah, it is what it is. So they said that they're fining me 25% of my prize money. And I got I won $6,000 at the World Nine Ball Championship. So 25% of 6000 is uh is $1,500. My only question there is what, what would have happened if I won the tournament and got $60,000? Would I have got fined $15,000? If I finished second, got 30000 and got fined uh, 7500 whatever it is. So I'm thinking like... Uh, didn't really uh, understand the wording. I'm thinking that like, should be a set figure here. Instead of saying 25%, you should maybe just said 1500 and then uh, obviously we'll de de deduct it from your price when you find. So I'm a little bit confused by that because uh, I'm thinking that that could have been like a crazy fine, let's say, even though I think it's still quite a lot of money. But anyway, I accepted the punishment, uh, hoping that this would be over. Uh, they will send their copy to Matroom, obviously a copy to me. And then, obviously, I'll get a reply from Matchroom to say uh, that it's been dealt with and everything else. And I thought that's what was going to happen. I'd be able to play the UK Open. And I knew I was going to play in the World Cup of Pool in June with Jason Shaw. So we was looking forward to that because I think we we're one of the favourites. Uh, anyway, I get an email back from Matchroom on, uh, on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, like a couple of days ago, basically, or yesterday. Uh, about an hour before they released the draw for the UK Open and uh, basically saying that I, uh, we appreciate your letter, we appreciate that you've had the result from the WPA, uh, but from our perspective, uh, my behaviour was unacceptable, uh, uh, I didn't act as a professional and uh, we've decided that uh, they're going to suspend me for 10 weeks well it might be 10 weeks until august the 1st so i can't participate in any any matroom run tournament by matroom themselves until august the 1st so that means i'm suspended from the uk open uh and also suspended from the wilkover pool so obviously i was absolutely sick uh shocked uh yeah i mean i'm not gonna lie i was uh, blown away really by the by that i've just got punished by the dbpa thinking that's uh the old reason why they reported the dbpa so they can deal with it and then that will be the end of the story so to get further punishment from matchroom i mean i was blown away and the punishment's a lot worse than what i got from the dbpa uh, probably 10 times worse really because i mean obviously i would have played in the world pool masters i'm pretty sure of that and obviously guaranteed money and probably chance to go really deep if not win it and obviously the World Cup of Pool, I believe that me and Jason are one of the favourites, if not the favourites. Again, guaranteed money. And obviously the UK Open, I'm up to number eight in the matchroom rankings. Number five on the Euro list. So I'm right in the mix for the Moscone Cup. And if I do really well on the UK Open, that really puts sets me up great for the rest of the season. Uh, going with, a, uh, with a, a really good chance, a realistic chance of qualifying for the Moscone Cup also. But also valuable rankings for next season. And obviously, I've gained a lot of momentum this year, the well, last 12 months, but especially this year. I've worked my ass off to get my game back to where it was, let's say, six, seven years. Probably worked harder than any, anyone else in the game. And I know there's a lot of guys out there who have put a lot of work in. I've put a lot of work in mentally uh, uh, and physically because uh, 
yeah, I've had a tough time in my life uh, the last five or six years. Uh, losing my mother, uh, break up my marriage, which was brutal, uh, not going to lie. Uh, and I really suffered with depression for like a good two or three years. And uh, yeah, uh, basically stopped playing pool for a good two or three years. I was less than a part-time player. And yeah, it was a tough time. So it's like COVID come, that messed things up. And then, uh, yeah, I've just been working my, my ass off, really, to get back where I was, get my game back to where it was, get my life back to where it was, really. Uh, and still working on that, to be honest, uh, even on the mental side of things. But a hell of a lot better than where I was, let's say, 18 months ago, two years ago. I was in a very, very bad place. Uh, with no light at the end of the tunnel and uh, some days I didn't want to get out of bed some days I just didn't answer the phone still don't a lot of times uh, become unsociable let's say so yeah life was tough I'm not going to lie I had my problems I know a lot of people speak about mental health these days I'm not one of them what's really come out and uh, spoke about it like a Mark Selby and all them people in the snooker world or whatever or other sports like well known celebrities I know I'm not a celebrity maybe a celebrity in the pool world that's about it but yeah, I mean, I've had an unbelievable career. Uh, probably one of the most successful players in, in history. Uh, um, but yeah, the last four or five years have been very, very, very tough. There's no doubt about it. And the last 12 months worked so hard to get my life back on track on and off the table. And it worked. Got momentum flying back up the rankings on the WPA rankings. Uh, a lot of great finishes lately. Fifth at the World 10 ball. Ninth at the World, ninth at the world 9 ball. Uh, won a GB9, got fifth in the GB9, finished second recently in a big tournament in the Super Billies Expo in, in Philadelphia. Lost to my great friend Jason. So my results have been very consistent. My game's back. I just need that little bit of luck, and I know I'm going to win a chance of winning a big tournament again. And I think the other players know it as well. So, yeah, so I was just like very disappointed in myself that I had the outburst that I had. And I own it and admit it and I believe, yeah, I wasn't professional. But I know other players in the past have acted a lot worse uh, in matchroom events, even in recent times. And, uh, yeah, I mean, do I agree with the punishment? Absolutely not. I just uh, can't believe it, to be honest. Uh, but I'm going to have to accept it. I'll take it on the chin, make sure that I don't do anything like this again. And... Uh, yeah, so I just basically wanted to put my my view, my story forward. Uh, probably my life, really. Uh, but yeah, so I've had tough times. I'll have tough times again. I've been knocked down before many times. And I know I'll definitely get back up. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's 10 weeks. It's two tournaments. It's not the end of the world, uh, even though it's big right now because I've got momentum, like I said. And I feel like I'm right there. I'm right in the mix. I'm ready to win a big tournament again. Uh working on my mental and my physical state and everything else and uh yeah feeling great on the table again feel great with a cue in my hand feel strong mentally under pressure uh and the game's just been evolving uh baby steps but it's been coming and coming and uh yeah so it's a absolutely massive blow i feel it's a very harsh punishment and uh yeah something what's uh going to take me a few weeks to to get my head around it but uh, yeah, so I just wanted to put it out there that that's the way it is. That yeah, I was very hum professional. Let's say used aggressive language, yes, but I didn't threaten nobody, didn't hurt nobody. Just had a, a stupid outburst, and everyone I spoke to says uh, uh, that you'd be okay, and I thought I'd be okay also. I thought yeah, I'd take my punishment, take my fine, and make sure it don't happen again. So to get double punishment was uh, a massive body blow. Um, one what come like still a, a big shock to me I'm not going to lie and uh, one what I find like uh, one what I don't agree with basically and uh, but it is what it is I have to learn uh, from my mistakes get back up off the floor come back stronger which I know I will this, this will make me even more determined to uh, get right back up there to win titles again get back in the Moscone all that stuff uh, yeah so uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh, also, Jason Shaw has been punished as well because obviously we was looking forward to playing the World Pool. We believe we were one of two or three teams as the favourites. Uh, unfortunately for him, 
it's uh, is 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 been punished as well. Let's not beat around the bush here. Uh, but it's going to be a great opportunity for someone else like Elliot Sanderson, Kelly or Imran, who's going to play with Jason now. So good, good luck to those guys. Hope they do well. Uh, but for me, yeah, just going to take a few weeks away, brush myself down, uh, get myself healthy, get myself mentally even stronger than before, uh, do some fishing, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, so I will not be involved in the pool world a lot for the next two months let's say i will play the gb9 i will probably play the euro tour i will probably play the german hope and the predator which is the same time as the world cup of pools so it's not the end of the world uh, everything happens for a reason and uh, that's where it is but yeah i just want to uh, really apologize to my sponsors uh i understand if you uh obviously disappointed in me uh and obviously if you want to uh uh, cut ties with me. Uh, I sort of I understand, but I don't think I was uh, the punishment deserves that. Uh, my actions deserve that. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors. What uh, what do believe in me and uh, what understand me and know me better than most. Uh, and also to my fans who uh, have been great to me and my close friends uh, and my family, especially. Uh, really close friends like Kinga and people like that and uh, yeah my, my family was everything to me really so yeah so that's me uh, I'm not going to wa waffle on anymore it's like 26 27 minutes I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel and I'll share it to my social media channels and uh, yeah I'll be doing a lot of videos now obviously for my YouTube page uh, keep myself busy really and do a lot of fishing and uh, yeah uh, so yeah that's my side of the story uh, whether you like it or not, then it's one of those, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just trying to learn from my mistakes and uh, come back stronger. So, anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, sorry if I bored you to death uh, and waffled on, which I know I do. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, we'll, uh, God bless you all and we'll speak to you soon.